Hi, today I'd like to talk about charges and drawing electric field lines between charges on diagrams, specifically for modeling. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. I'd just like to say right off the bat that this is likely going to be in a, a question on the first exam. And if you know what you're doing, it'll be an easy 10, easy 10 points. Um, so definitely well worth learning. Uh, firstly, I'm going to start with a simple example where we have a positive charge plus Q and a negative charge minus Q. And um, what I have here is I've, I've got one field line drawn. Um, and you'll notice that that field line, of course, emanates from the positive, terminates at the negative. So this is one of an infinite number of ways to properly draw electric field diagrams for this charge configuration. Another way I could draw it is I could have another field line emanating from plus Q and terminating at minus Q and any number of these field lines. So in other words, I can keep filling these out. Uh, one of the rules is that in the drawings, the field lines don't cross. So that's important. Um, so you'll notice I can just keep on drawing these as long as the ratio is correct. So in other words, the ratio is one to one here, positive charge minus charge, uh, one each. So for each one field line that leaves positive Q, one field line must terminate at negative Q. And uh, one interesting property of this example is that um, actually, as you start getting to a distance, uh, you, you're, you're noticing that unlike when we just had a positive charge, the field lines aren't emanating outwards, they're kind of looping in on each other. Um, and of course, the field, uh, the electric field strength is going to get weaker and weaker uh, for both these configurations, but especially for the one where the field lines are not emanating outwards um, radially. In this case, they're kind of looping in on each other. And so if we were to zoom out far enough, this positive charge and this minus charge that have the same um, quantity of charge, just opposite signs, they would appear to be emanating no electric field at all from a distance. So in other words, the charges are kind of annihilating the electrical effect of each other at some distance away. And so, um, yeah, this is an important concept. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a different configuration. So let's draw a few particles with charge. This time I'm going to do plus 2q. This is an example from the book. And this will be minus q. All right. So in this case, the ratio is 2 to 1. What this means is for every two lines that leave the plus 2 charge, one line must terminate at the negative q charge. So once again, there's infinitely many ways to draw this. Any two lines that leave plus two q, one of them, one of them must terminate at minus q. And so these are all valid drawings that we're doing here. Have two going in to negative q, two going out from positive two q. Okay, so the ratio is maintained. What you may notice here is that although some of the field lines from plus two q are looping in to negative q. Some of them are extending outwards radially. And so actually, unlike this first example where at a distance, it would appear that there was no charge there at all, like the electric field was so weak it was unnoticeable. In this case, you'll these field lines that are emanating outwards um, uh, compared to the ones that are looping in on minus Q, uh, from a distance, this will appear like an electric field caused by a positive Q charge. And we get that by, you know, in other words, taking the sum of the two charges that are close together. And that gives us kind of like a net charge for this configuration. And if you zoom out quite a distance, um, the electric field at that zoomed out area would appear almost the same as if you were to just replace this plus 2q and minus q with just a plus q. All right. So, had some good questions asked today that 
I wasn't quite sure how to answer immediately. I was asked, well, what if, what if the negative charge has the larger quantity? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's use a different number as well. So the way I've been showing it, you, you're kind of focusing on positive to negative. And in this case, let's do a minus three Q and a plus Q. So before it's like, well, that means for every one field line that leaves plus Q, that three need to terminate at minus three Q, that's not gonna work, right? So the way we focus on it when the minus charge is in larger quantity is we'll think about it like this. Um, for every field line that comes into minus three Q, or for every three field lines that come into minus three Q, one of those field lines must come from plus Q. So in other words, three lines enter minus Q, one of those lines must emanate from plus Q. All right. And of course, there, there can be uh, more complex configurations with you know three particles or more. I think on the test I took years ago, there was a, a configuration of three charged particles. And once again, there's, there's many ways you can draw this um, for every three field lines that go into minus three Q, one of them must come from plus Q. So the ratio is maintained here. I have, I have uh, six field lines entering minus three Q. Four of them are coming from um, outside and two of them are coming from plus Q. So that ratio of, of one third is maintained. All right. So this is a useful thing to know for this first exam. And uh, go ahead and practice it a little bit. I'm sure you'll have no problem. All right. Have a great rest of your day.